Good morning. Sorry about the dif uh, technical difficulties earlier. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to our March break virtual tour. My name is Pahada and I am the admissions and recruitment representative here at UTM. I have some of my awesome colleagues joining me today. But before we begin, I wanted to say that we are very excited that you are all joining us today. Not only uh, because we get a chance to explore our beautiful campus together, but also we have this opportunity to interact with our newly admitted students and applicants. So thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Um, we will go around to introducing ourselves. I'll start off with you, Jen. Perfect, thank you, Farah. Uh, my name is Jen and I'm the Occupancy and Admissions Coordinator here at UTM Residence. And so that's my focus today is just to talk to you all about Residence at UTM. Thank you, Jen. And now I'll turn the floor to you, Debra. Hi, everybody. My name is Debra. I'm a third year student, double majoring in political science and sociology. And I'll be giving you guys a tour for today. Awesome, thank you. And now I'll turn to you, Alicia. Hi everyone, my name is Alicia. I am a contract recruitment officer here at the Office of Recruitment and Admissions. And now I'm also a recent graduate from the University of Toronto Mississauga. I graduated this past spring. And so today I'm gonna to be able to answer any questions you folks may have. So throughout the presentation, while Father, Deborah, and Jen are sharing a little bit more about admissions, student life, and recruitment, feel free to drop your questions in the chat box. Either myself or my colleague, Lewis, will be behind the scenes being able to answer your questions. At the end, they'll put me back on screen so I can answer any questions you folks may have live for our panelists. So if you have any good questions, feel free to keep them towards the end and then I'll be able to ask our partners to share them live. Awesome, thank you so much, Alicia. So um, the agenda today will start with Deborah, who is our student ambassador. She will give you a personalized tour, just taking you to all of her favorite places on campus where she likes to hang out with her friends, grab a bite to eat and study. And then we'll turn the floor to Jen, who will give you an overview of what residence life looks like, residence life looks like here at UTM. Um, she will also walk you through uh, just what the application process looks like on Star Res. And then finally, we will bring, the, we will all be back on screen and just open the floor to a question and answer period. So this means that your participation is very important. I see that some of you are already leaving a comment with where you're joining us from, but please go ahead and do that. We're very excited to know and would love to know where you're all joining us from. Just leave the city and country. And also, if you have any questions, go ahead. This is your opportunity to ask us any questions that you would like answered. Some of these questions we will answer live. So in some ways you have uh, the power to kind of direct where the discussion will go today. With that being said, I will say goodbye to my friends and we'll see you soon shortly. Bye, Deborah, Jen, and Alicia. I will start off with a quick land acknowledgement. So land acknowledgements are really important because they are a fundamental first step towards reconciliation between indigenous peoples and settlers. And with most presentations here at UTM, we typically start with a land acknowledgement because we value this. We wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River, Today, this meeting place is still the home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. And now I'll bring up my friend, Deborah. Let's see here. Hi, Deborah. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good. Okay, are you ready to start your virtual tour? Yes, I am. Awesome, the floor is yours. I'll see you soon. Thank you, Father. See you later. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Deborah Lani. I'm in my third year. I'm pursuing a double major in political science and sociology with a minor in women and gender studies. Before we start our tour today, I want you guys to get to know a little bit more about me so we can just break the ice and have a fun time. So I've actually lived in quite a few places. Um, I grew up, I, woke, um, I was born in Nigeria and I came to Canada at the age of three. 
I've lived in Montreal, Calgary, and last but not least, Brampton, Ontario, which is where I got my high school diploma at Cardinal Leger Secondary School. While I was in high school, I was heavily involved in my um, school community. I was a part of the multicultural dance group, the basketball team, and the photography team. Um, I knew that coming to university, I wanted to study um, criminology, but after getting in, I decided to pursue a double major in political science and sociology with a minor in women and gender studies. I like that. Um, I like the idea of having advocation for others that did not have a voice, and I love the topics that we discuss in each class, which is really why I decided to do, change my majors and minors. And I wouldn't have been able to do this without help from my academic advisors, which brings me to my next stop, the Kinect Center. This is the Connect Center, an innovation complex. I found myself here so frequently during the school year, and you might too. This is where the Office of Financial Advisors and Academic Advisors are located. I've come here during the school year to map out my education or to hear more about financial resources. This is also the Office of Student Recruitment and Admissions. I'm currently doing a work study position as a student ambassador for community engagement. In my role, I do many things like panels such as these, and just different, um, different events to engage prospective students and help them with their journey um, and application process for their undergraduate degree. I've also had many political science courses in this building. If you're really interested in political science, you might find yourself in this exact this very classroom. All of my political science courses have been in this class and I've had such a wonderful time ever since. So right outside of the Connect Center is the My Way Mississauga Transit. So every student gets a U-Pass, which is a universal bus pass that allows you to take um, buses all across Mississauga without paying any additional fares. This bus pass comes with your tuition, of course, but I feel like it saves you so much money and it's so handy because you could take multiple buses without paying multiple fares. Um, I take the buses to different things such as the clinic, movie theaters, grocery stores, anything, you name it. And on the topic of bus stops, I just want to also tell you guys about the bus shuttle. So the UTM has a bus shuttle that takes you directly to the downtown campus, which is located in downtown Toronto. I've actually taken the UTM bus shuttle um, myself a couple of times to go to events like Heart House events, or even to just meet up with friends downtown. Or even if I just wanted to go shopping or anything, I just rather take the UTM shuttle because it takes you straight downtown with limited, with no stops at all. And all you have to do is just show your T card and which is your student card, and then you're able to go on for free. So you guys might not know what a T card is yet, but you actually get it at the student center and all your um, discounts and coupons and everything like that is that that's where you would get it. So let's go over to the student center so you guys can see what that looks like. So this is the student center. When you get into your first year, this is like the first place on campus you probably wanna, um, wanna be. This is where you get your student card, your U passes, discounts, coupons, the different things like the movie theaters, bowling, Wonderland, which is an amusement park in Ontario, and just different things. I find myself here almost as much as I find myself in class. I'm also a part of different clubs and campus communities. So that's where you would find a lot of the campus clubs at the student center. So now that we're talking about clubs, let me give you guys a little bit of insight of some of the things that I'm involved in. So coming into university, I know just like many of you guys probably have the mindset of going into university and just um, strictly focusing on your education and not really getting distracted. That was the exact same um, mindset I had coming into university, but I felt that with that mindset though, I lacked that social network and social connection. Um, so I decided to join the Black Students Association, which is the first club on campus that I joined. In my second year, I was the events coordinator where I did different events to um, help black help create a space for black students on campus. It was really fun. I learned so much things um, and I met so much people. Many people were in my program as well. So I was able to lean on people for social um, for social support and help in my classes. 
With that involvement, I decided to start my own club, which is the African Students Association, and which I'm currently the president of. We do different events and workshops to help personal and professional development. We've had academic success workshops, um, social networking workshops, um, mental health workshops, and so much more. If you want to check that out, you can check out our page. It's UTMASA underscore. Um, and many other things I'm a part of. I'm a student. I'm a Black student ambassador for Bay, which is Black Students Access to Educational Excellence, where we do different events like this that are more um, mitigated towards Black students and their and bridging their pathway to university. All my involvement in these in these different various clubs has helped me to gain that social network because I once was so introverted and very to myself, but after being a part of these clubs and communities, I've been able to have a voice on campus and be able to be more outspoken and meet new people. So, and next, the, the, other, the other really great thing about the Student Center is the Blind Duck Pub. You guys will find me here on Tuesdays and Thursdays getting half off on wings. They have different flavors, but my personal fave is the honey garlic. And if you're not really into wings, that's fine because the Blind Duck has so much different food options from pizza to burgers, to salads, and even bubble tea. So if that's, if that's what you love, then this is the place to be because it's also given at a discounted rate. So right outside the Student Center is actually the residence. And I wanna just take a quick stop there before we go on to our next stop. This is the Oscar Peterson Hall. It's one of the many residents that we have on the UTM campus. I personally never got to live on residence, but I definitely advise you guys to. I applied way too late, so don't make that mistake. The deadline is this month, March 31st. So if you're planning to live on campus, I highly suggest you do. Many students that I've met that were in big friends groups were already met each other in residence, so they already had that strong foundation and they did a lot of activities and things together during um, Frost Week, which is like a week where students get to know each other and do different activities. So they were already friends because they lived on residence together. And I also heard that um, they usually place you in the same residence with people that you're doing the same like major or minors as, which is really great. I find that very beneficial. So if you're thinking about um, applying to residence, please do that, um, the sooner the better. And before we get to our next stop, I just wanna show you guys something so funny. So before we go to Deerfield Hall, I just wanna tell you guys that literally when I'm walking to class, I always see deer. Just like this picture, they literally just walk through and walk past, and they're so comfortable. And you know, when I first saw a deer for the first time, I was a bit scared, <laughs> but after a while, I got so used to it, and it's actually so cool and exciting. So yeah, now let's actually go to Deerfield Hall. This is Deerfield Hall. It's one of the two places on campus that has a Starbucks inside. So in first year before my psychology labs, I'd usually grab like a latte or a coffee or something just to wake me up in the morning before having such a long day of labs. So that's what I really like. Another thing that I love about this building is just like the environment. It's such an open concept to the point where it's like you could still study in this open space, but it's also so quiet and calming so that you actually get work done. So that's what I really love about this building. I've, like I mentioned before, I've had my psychology labs in this building. And what I love about this is that everybody gets their own iMac, which is the, the computer screens that you see there. And um, I love the different science experiments that we had. So this is actually one of the labs that we've had, um, the lab rat lab, where we learned social conditioning. So if you're really into psychology, definitely look forward to this. <laughs> so the building that we're going to next is actually connected to the Deerfield Hall. It's called the Mandre and Demo Wanan building. This is the Mandre and Demo Winan, also known as the MN building. This building houses one of the most resourceful um, academic resources that I use on campus. It's the, Acad um, it's the Robert Gillespie Academic Skill Center. And basically it's like your own personal tutor for free. 
I go there so much um, for essay proofreading, grammatical, um, for grammatical checking, thesis development, anything of that nature. As a social science student, I feel like this is a very resourceful um, academic center that you could really benefit from. I see my grades progress heavily from the, from the advice and work that I go from there. And it's really great because these people, the people that are looking over your paper, they've already been in your position, they've already graduated from UCM, so they know exactly what your professors are looking for. So what better place to look for advice than here? Another thing I love about this building is the aesthetics. If you're an Instagram person or if you love selfies or if you love taking snaps, this is personally my favorite best lighting spot on campus. Like you could already see how beautiful it is in the winter. So imagine in the summer when the sun is hitting. Um, I love having club meetings here because it's so open. It's an open concept. It's um, very calming and soothing and it's not too lively. So I love coming here for having different clubs or exec meetings. But another place that I love having clubs and exec meetings is actually the library. So we're gonna go to the Hazel McCallion Academic Learning Center so you can take a look at that. This is the Hazel McCallion Academic Learning Center. This, build, this building houses the library. So remember when I was talking about the one of two places that has a Starbucks, the so first Deerfield Hall, the next place is the library. So after a long day of studying, you can grab something or just grab a drink with your friends or just chill in the Starbucks. It's a really great environment. Or if you wanna grab something before you study, that's the place to be. One thing I love about the library is that it hires to everybody's learning type. So if you are the person that likes to um, study in a quiet, um, very calming environment, the fourth floor would be the best place for you to be. It basically looks like this. And there's actually a rule up there about staying quiet. So if you really want that quiet space, that's the best place for you. As for me, I'm a very talkative person. I love to share concepts in open spaces. And I love just talking and discussing course material. So I usually um, book study rooms that look like this. In these study rooms, there's whiteboards and TVs, and you can book it for a certain amount of hours and you can just invite your friends in there and just study. Um, one thing that I love is the different things that we have access to. So like the TV, in my Religion 101 class, I had to watch Lion King for an assignment. So I connected my TV to the computer and me and my classmates were able to take notes and watch at the same time. Also, if you go downstairs, the help desk has different things such as whiteboarding markers, um, whiteboard markers, erasers, um, laptops, even chargers if you're forgetting your charger, and you can borrow books and anything of that kind with your student card, of course. But I just love that idea that everything is there and it's great like that. But after such a long day of studying and discussing course material, I just like to de-stress by going to the gym. So the next stop is the Recreation Athletics and Wellness Center. They get, oh, <laughs> this is the Recreation Athletics and Wellness Center. This is where our gym facilities are located. So I never really understood the importance of physical activity until I came to university. Sometimes you just need a de-stressor. Um, physical activity is really good because I noticed that after I go and do some type of physical activity, whether that's walking, going to the gym, swimming, playing basketball or anything like that, and I get back to my task, I'm able to focus more. So I definitely advise you guys to take advantage of your gym facilities. Um, the Rock, which is um, basically what we call the gym. So the Rock has different um, um, different programs for people. So like Zumba, boxing, yoga, we have swimming, we have track and different many things. So definitely take advantage of that. I met many of my close friends at the gym and we always keep each other accountable. So I love that. And the one thing that I love the most about The Rock is the basketball home games. So my first basketball home game that I ever went to was so lively. And like I said, when coming into university, I was so shy. So when I came into this environment of everybody yelling and excited, I was like, what is going on here? But it just made me feel more and more at home. And I was really able to connect to my UCAM community more. So I love basketball home games. You have chances to win different giveaways and raffles. And it's just a fun environment. So definitely come to our home games. I've never missed 
a basketball home game ever since. So after basketball home games, I usually like to grab a bite to eat with my friends, which is in the William D. Davis building that is also connected to this building. So that's where we're going to go next. So this is the William G. Davis building. It's actually one of the oldest buildings on the UCAM campus, but you would never know because of all the wonderful renovations that has been done. It literally looks like it's the newest building. So I'm always in here. This is even part of the renovations. If you look around, everywhere just looks so bright and nice. And one thing that this building is known for in first year for me anyways, was this Tim Hortons. So this Tim Hortons is like one of the best Tim Hortons on campus to me. And I feel like it is to everybody as well because the lines are very long. So if you want to get this to Morton's, make sure you come early to avoid any type of long lines. So after a long day of going to the gym and studying, you know, I feel like to cheat here and there. Um, the William D. Davis just added a Harvey's um, to, the, to the food options that we have. And I've never stopped getting their poutine ever since. So if you don't know what Harvey's is or if you're not, if you're not really familiar with Harvey's, it's just like a burger place, but they have poutines and, and I think they have veggie options as well. So definitely check this out. But just to add a little bit of balance, I can't go to the gym and then eat Harvey. So I usually just get like a bowl of um, a fruit bowl, which is usually at the center of this um, cafeteria where you can pick your own fruit and you can make your own fruit, fruit bowl. But I also like adding a little bit of whipped cream on top. I know guys. <laughs> But I just like sweet things, so I just like to add a little bit of whipped cream on, on top just to spice it up a little bit. So if you guys ever catch me here, come. I'm like, I can give you a few tips on what fruits go well together. But yeah, I really hope to see you guys there. Thank you so much for coming along with me on my campus tour. I'm going to invite Jen back up here so she can give you guys a little bit of insight into residence. Thanks, Deborah. I loved hearing all about your campus experiences and the lovely things you said about residents. Uh, speaking of which, I'm going to get started by talking about residents and what your first year experience in residence will look like. Um, and we'll start by talking about why you might choose a specific, uh, why you might choose residence in general. According to an academic study, it's actually been shown that there's a greater retention to second year um, and graduation, meaning that those who choose to live in residence are statistically more likely to stay in residence um, longer. Uh, additionally, this year, uh, there was easier synchronous learning because obviously you're in the same time zone as your classes. Uh, you'll have an easier access to in-person communities and progr programming, which makes it easier to make friends and have in-person connections. Um, you also have the opportunity to experience more independent living with your peers, uh, with access to our many resident services, including maintenance, our front desk, and 24-7, 365 support from students and professional staff. Uh, the application is very easy, and I am going to run through a little bit of what it looks like today. Um, and then lastly, you get to experience our wonderful programming that we do in residence, which is where I will focus next. So some of the residence um, services and supports that we have include residence council. Uh, so residence council is a student-led organization that represents students' needs and interests in residence. They have some fun events from like November to candy grams to bingo nights. Uh, we have a large orientation and frost week program in residence. Uh, which consists of the Get Experience in Residence Fair, uh, Coffee Houses, Res 101, Can I Kiss You, a bunch of different events that we host uh, for that first week of uh, being in residence. And then in Frost Week, when you come back in January, we also have a few LLCs or living learning communities in residence where students in specific programs can choose to live with people of the same program. Uh, so we have LLCs for the CCAT program, the computer science, uh, foundations in um, is basically uh, foundations of research. Uh, so if you're interested in doing research in uh, your university career, that would be a good one for you. Uh, LEAF or Leaders of an Environmentally Aware Future. So if you're really interested in, in the environment, that would be a good one for you. And then the Life Science Program. Uh, 
We also have our wonderful student staff who are always available for support. So our Dons, who are like your first friend in residence, are there for community building support and creating connections. Um, our PALs or our peer academic leaders are your academic support um, and help facilitate the transition um, academically from high school to university. Um, and lastly, our RSAs uh, or the resident services assistants, uh, they work at our resident services desk or the RST. Uh, and they're basically your administrative support in residence. Um, so they're at the front desk for any like administrative uh, needs that you potentially have like packages or mail um, or any questions about like admissions or anything like that. Uh, they're a great support there. We also have tons of great programming clubs in residence. Um, so we have an artistic resource team, equity outreach network, uh, the choir. So the home notes are really awesome. Um, a choir that we have in residence filled resident students. Uh, Coleman Cup, which is something that happens every Sunday. And it's more like a, uh, it's really focused on getting students out and active. So sometimes it's sporting themed, sometimes it's like board game themed. It's really just activities um, and a fun competition with students and residents. And then our sustainability committee. Uh, we also have um, some of the things that we did. So you might be wondering, like, how is residence safe, especially through the current situation that we're in? Um, and so we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that we've done in residence this year specifically uh, to accommodate um, your safety as it is our top priority. Um, so I'm just going to run through some of them. We have increased rigorous cleaning schedules. So we have seven days a week where our cleaning uh, and caretaking staff go around and um, clean, especially all the common areas. Uh, we do have single rooms for all students and residents and we will be carrying that into next year. So all students will be uh, given a single room. We have hand sanitizing stations in all public indoor spaces. Uh, we gave out Sheryl branded masks um, and so did the University of Toronto um, and we helped facilitate that. Um, we had plexiglass barriers for students, um, for our student services. So our front desk um, is now enclosed by uh, a plexiglass barrier for their safety. We have, and we have something called a self-reporting web form, which is essentially if you're in residence and you're experiencing symptoms um, and you want support, you just can fill out that web form and let a res life staff member know that you um, may be experiencing symptoms and need that support and they will be able to contact and get in touch with you right away. And lastly, just upon entry, like on move in um, and when you check in at residence, we do have health screening to make sure um, that all of our students are safe. So now I'm just going to go through some of the different residence styles that uh, you um, get to choose from um, in residence. Uh, so the first one is a suite style. So it's uh, a suite style single and it's in Roy Iver. So it's four bedrooms two bathrooms and it's more like an apartment style uh, unit. Then there's suite style super single, which is in Arendelle Hall. And it's very similar to the singles in the suite style in Roy, except there's actually two beds in one bedroom. Um, for this upcoming year, there will only be one student placed in those bedrooms, which is why they're called super singles. Um, but there is the furniture is going to remain in that space. The next we have is our traditional style, and that's an Oscar Peterson Hall. And that's two bedrooms with a bathroom in between. Um, and so you do share that bathroom with that one other person and only that one other person. And we also have our premium townhouse single and super single. Um, so you can see in uh, McGrath Valley that one bedroom is a single unit, it's got one bed, and then the other bedroom has two beds. Um, it is called a super single again because we will be giving all students a single room this year. So um, you will only be you'll be the only person in that bedroom, even though there's two beds. So you'll just have more furniture. And now I'm just going to run through some of the application deadlines with you um, to make sure that you fully know the application process. So the residence application is live and open on residence.utoronto.ca. The first deadline that you may have heard Deborah talk about is that March 31st. Um, so that's step one or the residence guarantee application. That is required in order for you to get the guarantee in residence. And essentially, it's just like indicating your interest in residence. Um, even if you're unsure, I highly recommend you get that step one done by March 31st because you can decide later like yes or no. But if you don't do that March 31st deadline, your guarantee is automatically revoked. 
The next thing that you'll need to do is accept uh, your offer of admission, which is uh, due by June 1st. So make sure that you accept your offer of admission with the university. And then we have step two or the UTM undergrad academic year 21 to 22 application. This is where you'll actually pay um, an application fee. You'll get to indicate all of the different styles of housing that you would prefer, indicate um, like same or mixed gender housing, all of those things. Um, in that application, it only appears on your residence at utoronto.ca or STARES. Um, it only appears there once you've accepted your offer and um, you've already done step one. So those two things need to be done in order for it to appear. Once you've done all three steps, your residence guarantee um, is maintained. Um, and just looking ahead, there is a few things that I wanted to highlight. Uh, one, we send confirmations on June 16th. So you will get an offer of residence, whether or not you're on the wait list or not, you'll get something on June 16th. Then on July 2nd, if you are given an offer, um, that is your deadline to actually accept your offer and pay your acceptance deposit. So that deposit is $1,650 and it is due on July 2nd. Um, so you have to make sure that that is paid uh, in order to secure your space and residence. Once you've done that on July 21st to 23rd, we do send room and roommate information. So uh, you'll get an email with where you're going to be placed and who your roommates are so you can start connecting. Um, now I'm just going to run through a bit of the residence fees. Um, so you can see the different uh, breakups of the different styles of housing and the different fees associated with them. Um, so I'm not going to read them word for word, um, but you can see that um, the fees um, are actually less 1650 and 350. So what that means is you've already paid 1650 to accept your offer and the 350 is how you apply. So that application fee I was mentioning. So in total, you've paid $2,000 already to your residence before you've even gotten here. So for example, if you were to live in Oscar Peterson Hall, for example, before you even gotten here, you'll have already paid $2,000. So your remaining balance will be about um, $9,372. That's what you'll owe. Um, so that $11,372 is the total amount um, that you'll be required to pay for residence if you were living in Oscar Peterson Hall. Just please keep in mind that the fees actually do not include meal plan um, and meal plan is required for all students who live in residence. We do have some YouTube videos that we would encourage you to check out and uh, my colleague Jess um, is going to post them in the chat. Um, the first one is just uh, a video to go through how to actually complete step one or that residence guarantee application. The second video here is, an, is a, a video about one of our students who lives in residence. Her name is Isabella and she's just talking about her experience in residence if you're curious about that. And the third video here is uh, uh, an instructional video about how to complete step two. So the UTM undergrad 21 to 22 residence application. Um, and it'll run through all the steps of the application, how you complete it and what that looks like. Um, if I didn't answer any of your questions here, if you want to throw them in the chat, by all means, please do. But you can also contact us. I just want to provide that. Um, so the application is on residence.utoronto.ca. Um, so star is. Um, if you do have any questions, you can reach us by email at resdes.utm at utoronto.ca, by phone at 905-828-5286, or via live chat, you can just check out our website at www.utm.utoronto.ca slash housing, and we'll chat with you right there. Please also connect with us on social media, on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And if we didn't, um, if you want to ask more questions or check out more about what we have, we are having a virtual showcase on March 20th from 2 to 3 p.m. So check us out there as well. But that's all I have for you for right now. So I'm gonna bring back Fada to the, to the stage. Hi, Jen. Thank you very much for your awesome and informative information. I really enjoyed learning more about residence life. We get a lot of questions, um, students emailing us and calling us about that. And one of the things I do regret not doing as a U of T alum is actually living on campus. So if you're hesitant or you're thinking about it, I would definitely say go for it. Um, it is a once in a lifetime experience. You get a chance to immerse yourself on campus life. Um, and you're probably more likely to attend all the events because you'll be very close to it. So definitely go for it. Um, now we are in the question and answer period. We have about 15 to 20 minutes left of our presentation. I will invite Deborah and Alicia, um, our chat moderator, 
online. Hi, guys. Hey, thank Perfect. you so much. That was a great presentation from all of you. The question has been popping. We've been getting a lot of questions relating student life, residents, and so forth. So I'll just take turns alternating between all three of you so that you guys can all share a little bit of information. Yeah. So the first person I'm going to be going to um, is I'm going to start off with Deborah. And the first question we have, is there any resources that students can use before um, the school starts to actually meet folks in their program? So do you mind talking a little bit about FROSH um, and what that experience looks like? So sorry, <laughs> guys. So there's FROSH week, which is basically like an orientation week for first year students. Um, it's like a week of events. Um, you learn, so there's different things during that week. So I think the first days where you get to know people, it's introduction, and then you get put into like teams for the week where you guys do different team building activities and you meet different students on campus. This is where you'll, and then your frosh leaders are usually upper year students. So they usually like give you advice and they um, give you a little bit of information on the campus life and you can ask them direct questions, which is really great. And then you're also in a group with different first year students. So you already get to make friends before school even starts. So you'll learn about resources and um, program opportunities and all of that during that first week of FROSH. And you also have a week of activities and fun. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely recommend FROSH as being the top thing to check out. Um, because when I was in my first year, I actually met a group of friends. They were all within my program and we actually are still friends till today. So it's a great opportunity for you to not only make friends who are within your actual core classes, but also friends who you're going to probably be taking your complementary courses with. So anything that is of special interest to you. And I know, Jen, you've touched on how residents can offer specific program housing. Is there anything specific you'd like to share about how residents can also offer program support? Uh, yeah, we uh, we really focus on making sure that students have the best residence experience possible, whether it's um, our DONS connecting you to a specific program or something that like even through one on one. So our DONS have one on ones with their students, which is a way for them to connect individually. And if you're talking about something um, and for example, uh, you talk about how like you really care about the environment and maybe you're not in the LEAF program, the DON might suggest that you check out our sustainability committee uh, to ensure that you're connected with a group on campus um, in residence specifically that connects with all the things that you're like super interested in. Um, and similar to what Deborah said, we also have our like orientation and frost week, which, which is that first connection on campus, like once you've moved in to really make sure um, that you're you're hitting some of those like really awesome programs and, and making a friend. That's our like biggest focus is making sure that you build a, a community in residence and that you make a friend, at least at least someone here that you can connect with um, and chat about all the wonderful things that you're experiencing in university. So what I'm really hearing from both of you is that UTM really, really fosters community and that we really want everyone to have the support system that they deserve and need. Awesome. So the next question, I'm going to put it over to you, Jen, and that is, is there any halal stops on campus or in specifically, is there ability for students to really get food that caters to their dietary restrictions or allergies, regardless if it's religious or not? Yeah, so uh, there's two parts to this that I want to chat about. The first is in the residence application, you do have the ability to indicate that you would like to actually be initiate a conversation with the hospitality and retail services um, to say like if there are any dietary restrictions that you specifically uh, would like met um, in your like uh, residence experience um, and hospitality and retail services will reach out. Um, unfortunately, residence is not uh, the ones who uh, facilitate your meal plans, meal plan, the meal plan offices for that, but they are definitely willing to hear and, and work with you on any dietary restrictions you have. However, the second part is we also offer personalized accommodation requests for students who uh, maybe specifically want a, a style of residence because of, for example, a dietary restriction. So let's say um, that uh, I have a, a bad allergy um, and I would really like to uh, cook my own food. So let's say, for example, I, I'm gluten free and I would really like the opportunity to have a kitchen to make sure that um, I have the option to cook when I want. Um, you do have the option to fill in a personalized accommodation request so that you can select um, why you need uh, that specific resident cell. So for example, um, a Roy Iver single suite style has a kitchen, you might want to choose that one over a traditional style, which doesn't have a kitchen. Um, and you can indicate, yes, I need this. 
this is why. Um, and we do our best to actually accommodate um, almost all personalized accommodation requests um, as they are needed. Yeah, and I'd love to just jump in here and also just mention that um, speaking on gluten-free, we're actually the first mm -hmm. university to be gluten-free certified in terms of having Yay. our own station on campus, which is really exciting. And the second thing is that we recognize that our student body is so, so diverse. We have students coming from all mm -hmm. across the world and within the country. And so we really want to foster the ability to make sure that everyone has something that speaks to them. And so we actually offer a lot of international cuisines on campus from Mongolian, Japanese, Indian, and so forth. So it's really a great place for you to explore different cuisines. We've had a lot of folks come in, never trying, excuse me, never trying something before. And then now they're like hooked on it. So speaking on food, can everyone just take a round of uh, yeah. round and just share what is your favorite spot on campus to eat from? For me, I would definitely say Cha Time. For those folks who don't know what Cha Time is, it's the bubble tea spot on campus. And honestly, they take so much of my money because anytime <laughs> I'm hungry, thirsty, I'm like, okay, cha time it is. Like, let's just do it. And I have, like, discovered so many different flavors from them that I never thought I would ever, ever be interested in. And now I can hands down say ube is one of my favorite, favorite flavors for anything now, food-related. So let's we'll start off with Fada and we'll go down the line. Yeah, um, my favorite place is actually the Davies Food Court because it has a lot of, like, fresh meals like it has a freshy outlet uh, section where you can get like your um healthy meals options but also if you have one a quick grab to like a quick quick uh, uh bite to eat like they have sandwiches and wraps that's my favorite place to grab food at utm and i'll turn to you deborah what about you um so i've eaten almost everything on the school school campus uh, I'm so ashamed, but the school has really taken my money in terms of food. Um, a, a lot of the places I like going is Quesada, which is like a burrito place. And you can kind of build your own burrito. You can have like a naked burrito or you can have it in a wrap. So depending on how I'm feeling that day, that's where I go from. But like, I never used to like black beans until I had burritos at the Quesada. So definitely try that out when you get on campus. Um, and... I really actually, so there's two uh, spots that I would say. I really love Coleman Commons is right on residence. So it's really convenient. Um, our office is right in residence. So if you're really, uh, or like in Oscar Peterson Hall, you can just run downstairs and grab food and bring it up to your own, which is really convenient. So I love the convenience aspect of Coleman Commons and they make food right in front of you, just like um, some of the other places that uh, you've all been talking about on campus. Um, but particularly, I love Booster Juice. Mm -hmm. um, so it is one of my like guilty pleasures. And if I could have a booster juice, like I swear every day, I think I would, um, other than like, yes, and draining my wallet. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, booster juice would have to be my favorite. Perfect. So guessing from all of this, we're all foodies and I'm sure all of you guys mm -hmm. will become foodies as well, if you're not already. All right, so I'd just like to take this moment to do a special shout out to Renee because Renee is actually a Cardinal Leader student and is interested in political science. So literally this is a perfect presentation for her, Deborah. Um, it totally resonates with you. And speaking on that, we have a student here that would love to know if there is anything you wish you had known in your first year that you know now. So yeah. I guess you can start with you and everyone can take a turn to just share a piece of advice that you were like, Damn, I wish someone told me this in first year, but like here I am to just spill you all the knowledge. So Deborah, go ahead. Yeah, so I have two um, advices. The first advice is um, seek out opportunities and take advantage of your resources. So in first year, I thought that it was a walk in the park. Like they tell you in high school all the time that nobody's gonna really walk you through it. You have to see your opportunity. You have to take your resources and actually look at them. So the school actually sends us emails all the time, but as for me, I never used to check my emails. So I actually didn't even know when um, to apply for my program. So I didn't even get into the actual program I wanted to till the beginning of my second year. So by the end of the first year, I was like getting ready to enroll in courses again. And I never picked my program during the period that you're supposed to at the end of first year. So when I was trying to enroll in programs, I was so confused. I wasn't getting into anything and I was having a panic attack. And my academic advisor was laughing. They're like, oh, you just, you don't, you didn't pick a program. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know I was supposed to pick what I thought. You just use your courses and then they just guess what you like based off the courses you pick, right? But that was one thing. So definitely keep up with your deadlines and like look at your resources 
And the second thing is being transparent with yourself. So I always say this during every event, being transparent with what you can handle and what you can't handle. Um, don't overwork yourself. Your mental health is above all. So making sure that you time balance and create um, maybe a plan or schedule for your work, your school, and your personal life. Never overdo something. You want to do um, your work and your school tasks to your best ability. And I know you want to get those good grades, but studying for 24 hours and not sleeping is not good. Um, take those times to take breaks and be transparent with the work that you can handle and cannot handle. Yeah. How about you, Jen? What would you recommend? Yeah. Um, so I, I wanted to echo a little bit of what Deborah said, but specifically about emails. Like one of the things is just like always be checking your emails. I think that's something that um, we tend to maybe forget, but a lot of information um, is like sent to us. Um, so just make sure that we're we're always checking um, and monitoring that. Um, the other thing is just get involved and. I'm gonna highlight residents here a little bit, but stay with us in residence. Um, it's a really good opportunity mm -hmm. um, and really worth it. Um, even, even in a pandemic, um, we've had students, and this is why I'm gonna highlight Isabella's story. She chose to stay with us in residence this year, um, even through the pandemic. Um, and she had an amazing experience. And it was really just about making sure that she was like staying connected with people. And that was one of the biggest things that we can do in residence is make sure that you connect with someone um, and, and make a friend. Um, and so part of the things, uh, part of the thing I wanted to talk about was um, just like making sure that you reach out and connect um, with something um, that you're interested in because the university has a lot of different clubs and and events and programs um, and specifically in residence we're also making sure that our students reach out and do and connect with something um, and that would be my biggest advice is just uh, get out there and and try something at the university because we have a lot to offer um, and there's always someone to connect with um, and specifically in residence, that's what we're here for and that's what we're designed for. So come stay with us. We're, we're happy to give you a good opportunity. And last but not least, Fada, what would you recommend? Um, I think we get, like, I get a lot of students. Well, one thing I wish I knew when I was in first year, and I always tell students that I speak to, even when they're through the application process or if they're calling in and they were just newly admitted is, Get advanced, like take advantage of all the free resources available to you at UTM. We have academic advisors. Their entire purpose is to sit down with you, help you plan uh, what your future would look like, help you choose your courses if you're concerned. If you're worried about one major, you want to try and go into another major, they're there to guide you throughout the entire time. We also have something called learning strategists. So high school is very different from university. Um, how you learned or studied in high school will be completely different than university. And we don't expect you to just know that on your own. There are learning strategists that will sit down with you, go over your course syllabus, uh, write down or even schedule your upcoming assignments, help you plan and learn and study. We also value different learners here at UTM. We have accessibility services available to you. If you require accommodations, they will help and provide that for you. If you need to take a little bit more time to submit your assignments, they're there and they're all free and accessible, part of your tuition. So I always, always advise students to take advantage of that. Um, most students discover that in their third and fourth year and they don't know that they were available their entire time. And the other thing is we have a lot of, yeah, with the academic advisors, we have like, so many different things that you could do. You could do a credit, no credit, if you're not doing so well in a course, you could work around while you could still get the credit, but not let it impact your GPA. So yes, these resources are available to you. Please take advantage of it, do your research and get in touch with them, make an appointment through the registrar's office and meet with an academic advisor. I could definitely echo all three of you. You guys are definitely speaking on things that I wish I had known that I, of course, found out later on in my years. The one last thing I would also love to share is how valuable your time is. Even if you have 30 minutes, you don't realize how important that is until you come to university and you're like, I could have answered emails at that time. I could have just quickly like prepped my notes before my next class. So don't think your time is too small until you actually get there because then you're going to be like, damn, I wish I could use those 10 minutes to do something valuable. Anyway, so that's enough of us sharing so much wisdom with you folks. We have a lot of students who are actually tuning in from all across the world, which is amazing. And so with that comes also a lot of students are wanting to learn a little bit more about the Mississauga campus. 
And so I'd love to start off with you, Jen. What is a, a unique feature to the Mississauga campus or anything that's in close proximity to our campus that you really love and appreciate? Um, so I think the, I mean, I love all three campuses, but I think the the Mississauga campus specifically um, has a really good uh, campus just for its nature. Um, so we're situated um, in a unique situ uh, space uh, where we have that we have Arendelle Park right um, across from us um, and right, right beside campus. Um, and then campus itself is just gorgeous. Um, so there's tons of really awesome walking spaces um, and places to get outdoors and do things. Um, and campus really feels like its own like little bubble, like its own campus bubble, um, which I think is a little bit different from maybe downtown where uh, it's kind of the hustle and bustle of the city. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to say, like, I love that you can, um, you know, even just walking from class, like you, you get to walk through, um, like the forest and walk through, um, campus and it's beautiful. So I have to say that is my, my favorite part. I definitely agree with you. We have so much to offer. I'd love to take this moment to do a huge plug. So our Instagram is UTM Future. We actually did a social media campaign highlighting what is specifically unique about UTM and Mississauga in general. So we're actually so cool that we're actually con conveniently situated to such close proximity to um, like city life, arts and culture, nature, and so forth. So I highly recommend checking out the link that I shared in the chat box for you to get a little bit more information about what does Mississauga have to offer and what can you actually explore when you are a student here. All right, so I'm gonna pass this over to you, Fada. And for students who are a little bit unsure of how to structure their courses or how to go about what is the right amount of credits they need to take, who would you advise they speak to you in any sort of resources you can recommend for them to check out? Yeah, definitely. As I mentioned, the academic advisors here at UTM are experts. Their entire job consists of just learning our program calendars inside and out and assisting students with structuring their courses and timetables. Um, but also every department uh, has an undergraduate advisor as well. And these are folks who are designed to assist students in particular departments just to help them um, work through their courses. I also would advise students to not hesitate and shy away from approaching the professors directly and even their teaching assistants, right? I know like I was really intimidated my first year from approaching our, my, my prof, but the great thing about UTM is that it is a big campus, but it has that small community feel. Um, you can have that direct access to your professor, ask them questions, sit down with them, meeting, meet them in their um, um, during their office hours, and they can help you just kind of um, structure your courses. If you, like I said, also take advantage of accessibility services. If you're feeling like you're taking too much on, it's fine. The great thing about a UFT de degree is that you can go as fast to complete it or as slow as you want. There is no time limit. It's really up. We want you to make the most of your time here. Um, so I would recommend to just do your research by exploring what the academic advisors have, the undergraduate advisors within your department, even your professors and your TAs, and take advantage of even take, um, discussing and having conversations with your fellow uh, classmates. And I know that you, Deborah, you recently, like you had a situation where you were switched your programs over. Can you talk about like your experience when you were doing that? Yeah, for sure. So. I came into university wanting to, obviously I still want to be an aspiring lawyer. So I came yeah. in thinking that my first day of criminology was going to be like how to get away with murder or suits or any of those great crime shows. I thought I was going to be head on already solving cases, but it wasn't really that case. I mean, the criminology program is amazing, but I feel like the political science program was just like a magnet to me. Like I love the idea of policies. I love the idea of learning like different inequalities on bigger levels and smaller levels. I love learning about the world around me and who governs my society so that I'm able to um, make better decisions when it comes to elections and whatnot. So that's what I really loved about political science and it opened doorways to different things. A lot of my courses actually intersect so I could be taking one course and it could account for my requirements for two courses. So I really loved the way and the way that how much diversity I had in my courses, but how much um, flexibility and options I had. So I went to my um, academic advisors and they were help. They were able to help me. They're like, honestly, you have to do what you're passionate in. You cannot take a course just for the sake of taking it for the name. 
if you don't do what you're passionate in, you might see a decrease in your grades. So once I started taking political science courses and women and gender studies and social, I noticed that my grades actually started to benefit from that. And I noticed that I could find myself reading course material and I don't feel like it's a dread. I actually enjoy what I'm reading and my assignments and my grades actually reflect all of that. So definitely do what you're passionate in for sure. Perfect. Thank you so much. This actually brings us to the end of our presentation today. I really want to, first of all, thank you, Alicia, Deborah, and Jen for taking the time to facilitate this discussion. Special thank you to all of our applicants and newly admitted students. We're very excited um, to have you join us in the fall. And we are appreciative of the questions that you asked us today. I hope you enjoyed our discussion as much as we did. If we didn't get a chance to answer your question, you could definitely get in touch with us through email or um, by phone. It's below. Our number is down there and our email address is also listed there. Uh, get in touch with us. We understand with COVID, you can't just walk into campus and approach someone and ask your questions. So we are available Monday to Thursday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. We also will be doing a virtual tour every single day of the week, um, except for Wednesday. And so please get in touch with us and like make sure like join us because we will have different student ambassadors talking about their own uh, experiences and our social media that Alicia said um, about upcoming events. So I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, get in touch with us if you have any more questions. We look forward to seeing you in the fall. Thank you. Bye. Bye guys.